This is the state of our politics right now. Man. This is a sad, sad fucking day. When, when you get shit like this. So. I'm reading through Twitter. And. Somebody. Um, famous for skepticism of COVID-19 vaccines. Um, passed away. You know. We could do the whole vaccine argument, but I'm not going to do that here. But just look at some of these comments. Conservative radio host who called himself Mr. Anti-Vax dies from COVID-19. Let's just report in the news. That's not bad. But. Yeah, look, look at all this shit. Mr. Anti-Vax seems to have turned into Mr. Not Alive. A third anti-vaccine conservative host dies of COVID-19. That's not bad. Yeah, just just read some of these. I don't even need to read these. I'll just... Yeah, see, this is, a, this is where the left wing is at right now. This right here is why I vote Republican. You know, you can make cases for political points without dancing on the dead bodies, right? You know, there, there's some very nuanced points that you can make about the vaccines. You know, and, and there's just... It's a personal choice based on making decisions about a recently released vaccine, right? That's your personal choice. You should have the information, but you should also have the ability to make a personal judgment. Because when you're talking about unknown unknowns, that's just a personal thing. Like, how much unquantifiable risk are you willing to take? But this is not an argument for vaccines, folks. These are people who are just dancing on dead bodies to make a political point. This is where the left wing is gone in this country. See, if, if you want a reason to vote for Republicans, this is it. I've done cross that bridge, though. I crossed that bridge, what, what three years ago? When they did that, um, they did that ad in Virginia where they accused all conservatives and libertarians of like wanting to murder Muslims and refugees and shit. Just look at some of these. These are, these are your these are your blue check marks. These are and where's Twitter at? You know when you had a story printed about Hunter Biden that was deleted and New York Post was suspended for almost a week after a Hunter Biden story. Not even violating any terms of service, just reporting the news. That wasn't even a death, but look at all this. Where's Twitter's anti-hate? Where are you at? Where are you at, Jack? Where are you at? Nowhere to be found. Yeah, this pro-empathy left wing. Just read it. Just keep reading it. These, these are the top posts. I... God, I hate to... I might click on latest just to see what's going on.
You know, if you look at the stats, too, the stats actually show that blue states are doing no better than red states regarding COVID. So it's like people trumpet the dead bodies. This is where politics have gone. This is where our politics have gone. It's it's just incredibly sad. Yeah, I'm gonna click latest. We're gonna see what's going on. Okay, some of these are spams. Yeah, just the amount of hatred. You know, you're not going to win any votes doing this. Like, you can celebrate someone's death. Yeah, this is just disgusting. It's sad. Yeah. This is the first take, and yeah. You're damn right I'm going to post this. We're, we're going to go through all this. Yeah, making humor, you know. I mean, I've seen it before. That's why it's like... I'm not mega outraged. It's just... You know, th there's no words for it, especially when, you know, like when it happened to Roger Ailes, it was probably this bad, but it's like, you know, Roger Ailes was an influencer. So it's like, you know, you talk about people who are influencers, like, you have people who had positive and negative change. Like, you know, it's okay to say, for example, like, um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was mostly negative on the Supreme Court. You know, her being dead doesn't suddenly make her a positive influencer, right? But there's a certain amount of respect you gotta have for somebody, especially with their families, right? You know, and then somebody like this who's just expressing his opinions and you're celebrating his death like it's some kind of great thing. But it's okay because you go out and you wear your mask and you think... You know, like the douche who wrote this. That wearing a mask makes you some kind of moral paragon of virtue. Doesn't make you shit. Doesn't make you shit. Just... This fucking zealous shit around thinking that wearing a mask or getting a vaccine makes you some kind of virtuous person. And you could be an asshole everywhere else in life, but if you wear a mask, this whole thing makes me sick. You know, I'm a Trump supporter, right? And you think that makes me pro-America? No. You know, there's times where I just say, fuck this country. 
You know what I mean that. Like, we've literally just gotten so lazy and so desensitized and so, you know, where nobody really has empathy. And, you know, don't tell me fucking left-wingers have empathy just because you want government health care. Don't fucking tell me that. Don't you fucking tell me that. Because it's about you. And I'm not even afraid to say it about the people watching this. It's about you. You know what? I'll even include myself in that, too. We've all gotten pretty fucking lazy about shit. We're, nobody holds accountability. Everybody just thinks they can lack empathy because they do enough and it'll always me. And, you know... The world doesn't give a shit about that. You know... I'll tell you what, we got something coming, because when you're talking about a lack of ability to recognize production, empathy, you know, core traditional values, and tradition doesn't make something good on its own, but when you're talking about something that has been productive for humanity it's a pretty powerful thing and it's like all this twitter shit it's facebook and all that it's eroded our humanity in a way i've never seen in my life i never thought i'd see these kinds of comments made about somebody and their families, right? Never. Like, 20, 30 years ago, like, you could disagree with somebody politically, but there'd always be that level of empathy there. You know, like, you know, when someone's dead, you know, if nothing else, they can't defend themselves, so at least have respect for their families, right? You don't have to agree with what they said while they're alive. But have some fucking respect. You know... And that's the biggest thing... We have to learn... You know, it's like I said, that this is, you know, you have idiots like this guy up here. Hopefully Mr. Anti-Vax listener sees a, see this tragic course and think differently. The free, safe, very available vaccine could have, would have saved his life. You know, that's not an argument for the vaccine. It's not like, oh, this person died and he didn't take the vaccine. Therefore, I should take the vaccine. What kind of fucking argument is that? You know, what kind of argument is that? Like, like what does that even mean? Like, oh, this guy had a job as a plumber and he didn't die tomorrow. Therefore, you should become a plumber. That is the dumbest fucking train of logic I have ever heard, ever read. You know, if you're going to convince people to get vaccinated, you know, pull up the science, you know, pull up the studies, talk about the trials, and when people... Um, show concerns, listen. And you know, you're not going to resolve every argument because some people just have a core set of values where it's just not going to change. And you know what? Be fine with it. It's okay. 
It's not a fucking religion. You know, you go into a debate or a discussion and then the first thing you should always ask is, is this going to be productive for me? And if it's not, walk away. Like, when you're being a fucking nasty asshole like that, what do you think that's accomplishing? It's doing nothing. You're just being a piece of shit. That's all it is. But no, people gotta treat every political opinion like it's a fucking religion. It's not. You know, 2,000 years ago, in Europe, you had the fucking Roman Empire. Where are all those political debates now? The only thing we have left that matters in this world from that time... Our values, you know, how people lived, you know, what we could relate to today, you know, day-to-day -day family relationships, certain aspects of occupation, you know, just the basics, the fundamentals, that's all we have. Like, none of the political discussions going on at that time mean anything. You know, in 200 years from now, your contribution's not going to be some political belief you had today. Your contribution, if there is to be one, if someone is to dig up your body or dig up the shit you've written from whatever it'd be archived in, the one thing that's going to be remembered is, you know... The things that are going to be remembered are your beliefs, your values, your philosophies. Things that could connect all humans all throughout history. You know, so if you think that you're being an asshole to make a political point is contributing to anything, it's doing nothing. Because people at that time, they're going to look back and they're going to say, you know, what a pile of shit this was. You know. So, I just... I would leave this country if I could. You know, it's... A lot of this is just... I talk to people about it a lot. It's... Western values. You know, we in the West have gotten so lazy, so entitled, so selfish. So void of the values that used to hold us together. You know, it's it's sad. I'm just going to end it here. There's no point going on. Thanks for listening, guys. God bless.